campaign promise quote, this way in this video you'll experience a segment of a quest from the middle of the game we're currently in Pacifica, one of Night City's six unique districts. You know Pacifica well? Nah. You guys aren't exactly great at rolling out the welcome mat for outsiders. It was designed to be a tourist hotspot within the city. As you can see, this didn't pan out. When uncertainty struck the global economy, investors pulled their funding, leaving most establishments unfinished. It's one of those places where expectations and reality collided, resulting in a heap of disappointment. Ongoing gang wars plague this part of the city. Outsiders don't come here if they don't have to. Even by Night City standards, it's dangerous to those unfamiliar with it. Taking a casual stroll here would not be a good idea. A fast motorbike or armor-plated car would be the safer option. But places like this have their advantages. If you're in need of rare goods or illegal cyberware, Pacifica's bustling local markets are a good place to start your search. The Grand Imperial Mall is a whole other story. It was one of the last developments in Pacifica to lose its funding. Until recently it stood vacant, but now a gang called the Animals has moved in for reasons unknown. Something's not going right for the big guy up top. And that's what we need to learn in order to earn the trust of the Voodoo Boys, the Animals' rivals. What the hell? Could fucking tell me what you plan to do first. You take job. You do what I say. So you chuck in now. Of the many gangs in Cyberpunk 2077, the Voodoo Boys are the most skilled at using the net. We are now seeing the Rizzo Agwe our subnet. Why? What for? You are my vessel now. I see what you see, hear what you hear. This mysterious gang of highly skilled netrunners has close ties to the local Haitian community. You are the? We have been waiting. Haitians settled in Pacifica in the 2060s after natural disasters struck their island and forced them to emigrate en masse. The Voodoo Boys gang formed around this same time, though at a smaller scale. Now the gang effectively rules Pacifica. <laughs> The Voodoo Boys don't usually work with outsiders. Lucky for us, it seems they're prepared to make an exception this time. Mr. Han sent me. He said you got murk work needs doing. Still, to earn their trust, we need to prove our worth. Placide, one of the Voodoo Boys' higher-ups, has offered us a mission. We need to infiltrate the Grand Imperial Mall, currently occupied by the Voodoo Boys' deadly enemy, a gang called the Animals. 20, 35. Zero seven. Three seconds before, poof, the camionette. We try to learn where the camionette come from. The animals are not your normal gang. Their presence in Pacifica is suspicious. They value might above all else and wear melee combat implants to raise their prowess in combat. Their beverage of choice is juice, a potent strength and speed enhancing concoction. As sought after bouncers, they're usually dispersed throughout town. As skilled street level business types, they've cornered the market in illegal substances and underground live or die prize fights. When they converge in one spot, it's for something big. It's then they appoint the fastest and strongest among them as their ad hoc leader. In this case, it's a woman named Sasquatch. You said you wanted my vest. It's insane. No. As far as I remember, you said no bone brain buffaloes on steroids. I'm afraid that's the cost of doing biz. This is the tech Placide was talking about. It seems non-standard for the animals. And this is where we come in. Getting to the van won't be easy, but we're more than qualified for the job, which we can complete in one of many ways. The character creation in Cyberpunk 2077 is the kind you'd expect from a full-fledged RPG. You start by choosing your past, important because this unlocks special options at important story junctures. You also fully customize your character using a deep customization system that spans not only your look and style, but also your abilities. Cyberpunk 2077 does not feature fixed classes. Instead, it has a fluid class system that allows players to mix and match a wide range of abilities to suit their play styles. You can create a strong solo character, a skilled netrunner, or any other hybrid class you can imagine.
Let's see how a solo play style in Cyberpunk 2077 might work. Solos prefer a direct approach. They use guns and might to get things done. So let's wreak some havoc. With our enhanced strength, we can strip this turret of its weapon to give the animals a taste of their own medicine. This is how a player investing in solo abilities might live out their Terminator power fantasy. Enhanced strength lets us force open doors or grab enemies to use as human shields. We also gain access to powerful melee combat cyberware. So even someone as fast and strong as Sasquatch, the leader of this group of animals, is not impossible to beat for a solo. But Sasquatch has a different game plan. She's out to jack in and hack us. Let's see how this plays out. Ready for some fun? Oh, Proceed. What's going on? It's our choice if we want to finish her off or spare her. Your cyberpunk, your rules. If you'd rather sneak around, hide, and strike from the shadows, no problem. Just develop your net running skills to get around obstacles or hack into enemy tech to have it do the dirty work for you. Net running abilities mean hacking skills that let us use our cyber deck to breach access points. For this, we fill the buffer of our cyber deck with a string of instructions represented by these letters and numbers. Matching the instructions for basic access grants us control of devices connected to this network. The more instructions we match, the more control we gain over elements in the network. We can hack our way through in numerous ways. A quick hack may grant us control of the security camera. Another one should let us tweak the difficulty of the training bot to create a distraction. With our nanowire, we can even hack this guy's implants from a distance. In this world, almost everything is connected to a local network. And that means it can be hacked. Ours is a wolf. Which brings us back to cyberspace. You don't get to do anything in the net unnoticed. There's always someone watching. It could be Corpos, or even worse, it could be Netwatch. And that is exactly the case here. Who is they? Netwatch. They always have to fuck us. Netwatch and the Voodoo Boys are like fire and ice. The first of these wants to maintain the old order and protect people from AI anarchy originating from beyond the Black Wall. The Voodoo Boys want to establish contact with the free AIs. They believe this will enable their boundless expansion on the net and grant them the upper hand over Netwatch. Netwatch sees this as the end of the world. Both are right. Whoa, hey. Easy. How you deal with the Netwatch agent is entirely up to you. Do we side with the gang? Choosing to be on Netwatch's bad side is never wise. But can we really trust the Voodoo Boys? You set me up! As you can see, we have many possible options. But in each case, we take a risk. I think I'll just stick to my plan. Cyberpunk, few things go as planned. 
And that was just a glimpse of how complex the branching storyline in Cyberpunk 2077 can get. Every decision you make will have consequences. Your choices will shape how the world reacts to you and affect your relationships with those around you. One of those relationships is special. Ever heard of Johnny Silverhand, a rebel rocker boy who will be your companion throughout your adventure in Night City? Come on, really think they give a rat's dick how you look? Like everyone in Cyberpunk 2077, he has his own agenda. You'll decide if he'll be your ally or your enemy. And that chip in your head, the one thanks to which Johnny lives inside your mind. Well, that's a story for another time. down these doors after what you and your psycho friends Thank you. All right. All right. I got to talk to you about something. 
<laughs> I mean, we got to talk to you about something. CD Project Red. Cyberpunk 2077. All right. A while back, the guys from CD Projekt Red approached me and asked me to be a part of their new project, Cyberpunk 2077. They were going on and on about how they'd create this vast open world with a branching storyline, how you'd be able to customize your character through in-game choices. And it's not something I knew before, but I was excited by. And I'm always drawn to fascinating stories. Yeah. Cyberpunk yeah. is set in a metropolis of the future, where body modification has become an obsession. You play as an outlaw, an enhanced mercenary working in the sleazy underbelly of the city. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but let me tell you, the feeling of, of being there, of walking the streets of the future, is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. All right, all right, all right. So I guess I got to finish this, so tell me. Do you guys want to know? Um, when there's uh, when it, the release date. Yeah. yeah. All right. Then check this out. My man, you made it. You blowing up all over the news. Are you alone? I just want the money. You got the chip? All right, start her up, bug. Why don't you go to the bathroom, wash up, we gonna be with you in a minute. Wow. Oh, come on, man. Your neck, it's a mess. While hotel security has yet to comment, we do know the suspect seems to have fled the scene. Initiating combat mode. Go! Destination confirmed. Woo That's what I'm talking about! All right! In and out, bitches! We're rich! Oh, we are going to the major leagues, Jackie! Right. <laughs> Jack? Oh. oh, shit! No, 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 no. Okay, oh. get to a clinic now. Mr. Wells' condition is critical. Go! Immediate medical help okay. is required. Just, just hold on. Just... <sighs> Hey, hey, just think about all the good shit we're gonna have, huh? I'm sorry. Decks. Every corporal cop in this city is gonna be blasting down these doors after what you and your psycho friend did. We didn't need all this cocksucking attention, damn it.
Wait the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. It's rain wet streets, it's nights like this with fog rolling in, cars, faceless people going by doing the things that they're doing. There's something kind of hypnotic about it. That's when I get inspired to carry what these streets are like, what the city is like, the mysteries, the stories, the thousands and thousands of people that you pass that are going by as shadows in this wet, cold, dangerous environment. I wanted to grab that. I wanted to take it into the future. And where I took it was cyberpunk. What I loved was the fact that it was a combination of dystopian society, a lot of technology, with this really great overlayer of almost film noir. In a cyberpunk world, I realized real soon, was a world where people had the technology, but it didn't fundamentally change the fact that there was a lot of treacherous, nasty behavior, large weapons, and a lot of sort of serious danger all about. The important part in cyberpunk is just that. It's not the technology, it's the feel. It's getting that dark, gritty, rain-wet street feeling, but at the same time, getting that rock and roll, lost and desperate and dangerous quality. But cyberpunk is about that interface between people and technology, but not in that transhumanist way where it's all about the technology changing or improving them. It's about how people use things. There's a great Gibson saying, the street finds its uses for things. And that's what cyberpunk is about. Cyberpunk isn't about saving humanity, it's about saving yourself. We've uh, approached doing this video game numerous times before. We have fought to find somebody who was enough of a fan of the world and the game to not want to go change it around or to you know, stick a label of cyberpunk on it and then do something totally different. And so when CDPR approached us, what we realized really rapidly was these guys are fans. These guys know the material. They're quoting things back to me I've forgotten. So they got it. And that's an important thing. You have to be able to understand why this world exists. They're dragging my butt all the way over to Poland several times a year. We're excited because there is a really strong element of cross-pollination. Uh, there's a really strong element of cooperative building going on. And that's really great. Cyberpunk 2020 was about early cyberpunk. It was a world in which people didn't know a lot about what the tropes were, the feel for it. The great part about 2077 is that it's a mature form of that. We're basically able to progress a larger arc. So you're going to get to see the outcomes of things that we started to talk about in the fourth corporate war. And we're going to be able to let players who play the previous game to see how those progress, see where they go to, and how they'll shape them. We're looking at the same mucky, nasty night city that you were in before, just a lot bigger and probably a lot more dangerous and with a lot of players you don't know about yet. 2077 is about the cyberpunk you thought you knew, scaled up, bigger, fatter, stranger. It's the visual component that the frozen pictures we would put in the books can't give you. It's the sound, it's the feel, it's the movement. 77 is going to be about being there. We've gone through a long, long journey, all of us. Those of you who have been fans have been waiting for us to get the right game together at the right time, the right team. And we were going to wait long enough to make sure it happened the right way. Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be the right way. And I can't wait to play it. And I'm hoping you guys will want to play it as much as I want to play it. Because it's going to be a hell of a ride. In 2077, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. Main issues, sky-high rate of violence, and more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. This city's always got a promise for you. Might be a lie, an illusion. But it's there, just around the corner, and it keeps you going. It's a city.
city of dreams. And I'm a big dreamer. This guy looks an awful lot like one of those scavengers we took out earlier. Something tells me there wasn't no coincidence, huh? Jackie's car is a super-powered sports car running on Chew 2, the super fuel of the future. Players can explore Night City freely, in many different cars, on bikes, and in other types of vehicles. This does not look good. Puta madre! Grab the wheel, Jack! Oh, fuck! It looks like the scavengers from earlier are still angry. They're pulling ahead, Haida. Watch it now. Got it. All right. I think we got rid of them. That was intense. Ah, shit! The fuck was that? Night City never sleeps. Danger lurks around every corner, even in daytime. Random encounters like these are an example of how your actions directly influence your open world